five fifty fifty five fifty if it builds below can flush and Nvidia got hit pretty you know pretty aggressively as well. Here's the whole channel right here, right? Here's the whole 550 channel, and it got hit pretty aggressively uh, all the way down to the 536 level. I, I, I like it for tomorrow. You know, if this thing confirms tomorrow. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly update. How's everybody's day? Hope everybody did uh, well today. Um, so let's talk about uh, the weekend video. Uh, I thought I made a pretty decent, compelling case why um, I was, I don't wanna use the word bearish. I, I, at least I was sell biased today on beta names. Um, again, what we saw last week, um, not only did a lot of names did not participate, we also saw a lot of names that were very, very strong uh, that continuously got upgrades. And, I, and again, I kept on using uh, Netflix as an example. Like Netflix was a perfect example uh, that we talked about. Stock got you know upgraded uh, three days in a row, literally three days in a row on last week and every single day uh, they got sold. So what happens this morning? Logically, they get upgraded again. We'll get to that in a second. But I, I want to talk about the macro number and exactly what is going on in the market and why I think tomorrow uh, could be a very, very important day. So the market gapped up today, okay, uh, up you know, a pretty decent amount uh, pre-market. And the one thing that I, I, I wanted to kind of pay attention to what these beta names were going to do on that gap up. Uh, again, we talked about a potential um, back test right into the area where they broke out. That's exactly what happened today. But the most important part was we want to see how the headlines were was going to affect. So the, this is how crazy the, the media is. So CNBC reports, and again, I'm sure it was Bloomberg and Fox and everything else in between, but the market is rallying pre-market. Market's rallying at the open because of optimism of a deal being done. This afternoon, the market sells off. Well, the market is pessimistic because a deal might not get done. And again, Pelosi and everybody else in between, uh, apparently they set kind of a line in the sand for tomorrow. If a deal doesn't get done, we're not going to get it done. So they sell off the market. And you know what's going to happen tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning, the future is going to rise again. And they're going to talk about optimism that a last minute deal will get done. So we are literally hanging on per headline, okay? We're literally headline from headline away from either boom or bust. But again, the most important part, uh, before those headlines even hit, again, just listen to, just try to listen what the market is trying to tell us. So I think this sell-off today was not because of the, the fact that a stimulus deal uh, won't get signed in time. I think, again, I think both parties want a deal signed. Uh, again, I think maybe um, just kind of an ultimatum, a line in the sand for tomorrow. You know, you know something's going to come out overnight. You know, Trump is going to comment at some point uh, this evening or tomorrow morning that a deal is going to get done and the future is going to rise again. But in case they don't, in case that headline uh, does not even come close to the table, we want to make sure where we, we understand where we are technically. So we got the back test, right? We talked about the back test into this rising support where the market broke out. Remember, we've been talking about this for nausea, that the 283 level that the Qs broke out of. And now we finally got the back test today into the rising support where the Qs held roughly around this $23 level. So this is a good thing, okay? So basically, what could have been prolonged for two, three days got exercised and really pretty much done within one day. So we got that done. So the question is, what happens next, okay? Um, I think tomorrow is going to be a very important day. If we gap lower, okay, if we gap lower and we continue to have selling pressure, we can go down all the way down to the 280 level. The bulls don't want to do that, okay? It's very, very important that the bulls kind of hold on to this 283 level, especially if we do get a gap down. It's imperative that the bulls kind of remount uh, this 283 level and go higher because, again, think about how long it took the bulls to get out of this range, right? It started from... Uh, September, uh, September the 10th, and we finally got out of this range a month later. So it took a month, right? It literally took a month to get out of this whole range that looked really, really iffy 
for a very long time to finally come back to this range, and now the bulls must. Okay, it's, it's, it's not really a subjective argument here. The bulls really must defend this level. So yeah, tomorrow I think is a pretty important day because again, if they go back into this range and close below this rise in support, again, this is the future, right? This is literally the future. And again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. This is just technical, basic technical analysis. Because again, if we don't hold on to this 283 level tomorrow by the close, and we confirm it going lower, then the next stop right here is 280, and it closed below 280, which is the 50-day moving average. Again, so forth and so on and so on, until we go all the way to the bottom of the range. That's why I say tomorrow's level is kind of important. And when you're charting today, um, you're, you'll notice some things, right? You'll notice there's not obvious shorts, okay? They're just not obvious shorts. Look, there's some beta names uh, that definitely look like they're about to, to get hit. And we'll talk about a few of them today uh, that we had on the pivot feed. But again, we are in the beginning of earnings season. Tomorrow, uh, Netflix kicks off um, after the close and then so forth and so on. We got Tesla coming up and then next week, Amazon and Apple and so forth and so on. So you're not going to get one of these 10 star overnight plays that you'll be able to look at the charts tonight and turn around and say, this is a clear short. But again, we have to use the cues as a very, very important line in the sand because if the cues go, all the components in the cues will go after it. And again, this is my point of things not obvious. If you look at Amazon for a second, right? Again, Amazon still really needs to confirm this whole channel to go lower. Again, that is no slam dunk. You look at Apple, for example, again, Apple made it all the way down to its rising support. Yeah, look, if it confirms tomorrow, is it a clean shot back to this 113 level? Absolutely. But again, you're going to find a lot of names that are not obvious, like a square, right? Square that's still hugging its uh, hugging its support. You have the names like Microsoft, for example. Again, even though it came lower today, there's a lot of support that's following it. So the market is going to need to do a little bit of work, and, and nothing is going to be uh, really decided tomorrow. But the one thing that we really need to, to really understand, if we do close below the 283 level, then slowly but surely we're going to start getting much clearer short setups the following days. The only monkey wrench in this whole equation is, again, company has, has a really bad looking chart. They came out, they come out with earnings, they, you know, and they'll take up the whole group. So again, there's a lot of if-then scenarios. There's a lot of moving parts just because of earnings, just because of the whole COVID thing, of stimulus news. So you have to be very, very flexible, uh, especially if you're new traders. Again, you don't need to be aggressive uh, in the next several days. Let things play out a little bit. Again, you don't need uh, to have 35 trades a day. Catch one, right? If, there, if one is available and it meets your criteria and it fits your process, by all means. But again, you have to be a little smart about it. There's so many moving parts right now uh, that could throw uh, a curveball at you at any time. And, and again, I say, I've been saying this all the time, avoid the afternoons. Try to get, get as aggressive as possible, you know, uh, value given uh, in the mornings. Just leave the afternoons alone. Again, look what happened today uh, in the afternoon, full cell, uh, full cell mode uh, rug pull. So again, going into tomorrow, we, we want to definitely watch that 283 level uh, above and below to kind of give us more clarity uh, for the next day. So let's talk about today's pivots. And again, you know, we started the day, uh, we talked, you know, we had some notes, uh, we talked about uh, the Netflix upgrades, um, you know, all these days in a row. Um, so, you know, I felt, I felt it was a really good trade there. Okay, I, I caught it pretty decent today, not as much as liquidity that I wanted, because again, sometimes Netflix trades, sometimes a dollar spread, which is, is crazy considering where it used to be. Maybe this, maybe this thing finally needs a, you know, maybe it needs a split. Maybe it needs a little bit of liquidity for it. Uh, they do come out with earnings. Uh, tomorrow, so I, I kind of want to avoid uh, Netflix tomorrow because it means there's gonna be a lot of people. Um, there's going to be a lot of people dip buying it tomorrow. At any point, the last thing you want to do uh, is get caught on a squeeze. You know, depending how uh, the stock looks. So basically, uh, 310 needs to build. We talked about Alibaba pre-market. Uh, 310 needs to build. Uh, Baba gave a really strong move right at the open, right? So here is the 310, right? So here is the whole 310 channel. Right, the whole 310 channel and just shot up right here, almost to the 314. And again, here's my point. Even the strong names that started out strong lost their ranges very, very quick. So if you did, if you did catch Alibaba, good job there. Uh, and this is, you know, this is definitely my trade uh, for today. Uh, Netflix upgraded now fourth day in a row. And again, we don't know what's going to happen after earnings. You know, tomorrow they could come out with some 
blowout earnings, the stock could go to 700. We don't know. We're, again, we're just talking about day by day. Uh, Netflix upgraded fourth day in a row. Previous three days were sold. For experienced traders only, watch the green to red short setup. Note this isn't a, a, a pivot. This is just the momentum. 530 needs to confirm down. Uh, that's where I got short. Excuse me, I got short at 531, that opening range low. Uh, and the stock got hit pretty decent. So the 5.30 low went hit. Uh, traded all the way down to the 20, 5.25 area. Pretty decent move. Again, the just liquidity uh, was not the greatest. So again, it is what it is. Uh, Beyond held the bottom of the range. And there's actually a two-sided trade setting up for tomorrow. Um, so if you look at the bottom of the range, I like that 82 level. And it held pretty perfectly here. So I like, I kind of like beyond both sides tomorrow. You can see the bottom range here, very, very definitive. It was pretty much put in a double top, a double bottom today. But at the same time today, it put in a triple top as well. So something I think has to give on beyond, right? Either the bottom of the range uh, confirms tomorrow, goes lower, or the top of the range off this five day confirms and it goes higher. So we definitely want to pay attention on beyond. Uh, I'm very open to both sides. Uh, NVIDIA got hit 550, 50, 5, 5 is, it was, it was 550, 50, not 500. Uh, 550, 50, 550, if it builds below, can flush. And NVIDIA got hit pretty, you know, pretty aggressively as well. Here was the whole channel right here, right? Here's the whole 550 channel, and it got hit pretty aggressively uh, all the way down to the 536 level. I, I, I like it for tomorrow. You know, if this thing confirms tomorrow, look how much room we have down. There's a lot of room down, guys. Remember, that, again, stocks trade from support to support. So if this support gets taken out, look how much room you have down. So we definitely want to continue to watch um, continue to watch NVIDIA. Uh, Baidu really didn't do anything. Uh, again, not a lot of strength in the market. Uh, Baidu uh, took out that 33 uh, went to like, you know, 33 and a half nothing and then just reverse course. And again, it really did show you how weak a lot of these names were. And that's the whole point why I'm very, very, um, you know, I'm kind of leaning to the downside tomorrow on a lot of names. But again, there are some upside potential as well. So again, we want us to be very, very nimble for tomorrow. Uh, team continues to be uh, a pretty big monster here. Uh, 213, 214 needs to build uh, after Friday's big breakout. Here was team, right? Here was team. Uh, took out that 213 level, went to uh, 216. Uh, again, still looks good. This is one of the names that still looks very, very strong. A name that, again, you should be definitely watching uh, to buy on dips. Uh, DDD, $7 needs to build. Uh, not my thing, but if you did take the trade, again, took, you know, took out 7 went to 720 Again, is 20 cents good on a $7 stock? I don't know. Right, I don't know, but uh, it does look good. First close uh, over this whole formation. If it does confirm, there's a shot it goes to the 750 level. So again, not a bad looking chart. Uh, Go Go really didn't do too much. Uh, 1170 needs to build. Went to 12 bucks, and that's it. Right, and that's it. Uh, ironically, the most amazing part of this was I really thought there was going to get another move back to the 12 dollar area. We saw a pretty decent. Uh, November 14 call buyer step in. So again, we, we definitely want to set an alert for this $12 area, but again, it's not going to be in play uh, anytime soon. Uh, so Netflix, again, take on the way down. Again, I said 525, 526 uh, is potential. Went to 2538. So really nice move there on Netflix. Uh, take on the way up, right? Take on the way up. Uh, big move on NVIDIA. Take on the way down. Um, and then, yeah, I was watching Beyond, didn't get through, and there was a nice little cash flow move on pins towards the end of the day. Uh, 45, 90, 46 needs to build. Uh, I went to like 46, 40. I, I still like it. It actually looks pretty good. Pins, uh, nice breakout. I think the Nigerians covered it on CNBC, unusual option activity uh, this afternoon, and that is it. So, you know, we're kind of set up for tomorrow, okay? I definitely want to be limber. There's definitely some longs I like. There's definitely some shorts I like. Uh, again, I think the most important part is to kind of get through this period. Uh, again, we have elections basically in two weeks, okay? Um, I would advise, especially the new traders, um, you know, look, if you have to, not necessarily sit on the sidelines, but if you have to kind of decrease your activity, it's pretty smart. Or if you are going to uh, trade normally, again, allocate those three, four hours in the morning and just let the market play out in the afternoon. Again, there's just so many different uh, news blips that actually hit the market. It's pretty, pretty intense. And again, as you see, uh, by the afternoon flush in the market, again, this, this move 
on the queues, right, didn't come at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, 12, you know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. It came, you know, after 2, 3 o'clock. So, again, that is when you're completely exposed uh, to headlines. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless everybody. Stay healthy, and I'll see you all tomorrow.